this is a very quick overview of the EYLF or Early Years Learning Framework, our curriculum framework for early years 2.0. This, this is the most recent version of the EYLF, which you can use in your practice as an early childhood educator and teacher. Four, uh, planning. So you can consider the goals for children. And when you are writing your programs, you can link your programs to the principles, practices, learning outcomes. Also three overarching ideas, belonging, being and becoming. So you can see that this diagram really helps you to see EYLF all at once. And also if you're familiar with the previous version of the EYLF, you can see the changes that were made in the EYLF. I really, really like this diagram because of the use of color coding. So we have three big ideas, belonging, being, becoming. We also have pink principles yes so which are now extended so we used to have five of them uh, now we have eight of them uh, we see purple practices we used to have eight of them and now we have seven one two three four five six seven and we also have five learning outcomes which didn't really change in terms of the titles, but they have been updated as well a little bit. So it's worth re-reading these parts as well. And I hope you do hold EYLF book as your table book, as your textbook, as your reference book, and as your guide anyway. So that was the planning part. You also will be able to use EYLF for reflecting on your practice. Many of my students in Certificate 3 only start learning about EYLF. While if you are an experienced educator, whether it's diploma educator or bachelor qualified teacher, you will find EYLF useful to reflect on one principle at a time. For example, how do you provide secure, respectful and reciprocal relationships? To children are you building respectful relationships all the time are you always respectful or can you improve uh, also in terms of reciprocal what if child doesn't respond or what if you feel difficult to connect with particular child or a group of children so you also can use practices as a lens for reflection for example one of my favorite practices, and you will see many videos that I created on that, is play-based learning and intentionality. So as you can see, they changed intentional teaching to intentionality. And if you consider play-based learning intentionality, you can go to the body of the EYLF, read about what is play-based learning, context for learning, and how uh, you can support it. So there are some wonderful uh, points that you can use for reflections am i supporting play-based learning well am i intentional so what intentionality in play is and uh, this could be a great point for reflection you also can use learning outcomes for reflections as well so i've seen some centers use one outcome at a time for planning curriculum there are many ways to program and plan in early childhood education and care. So learning outcomes are broad uh, goals or broad outcomes, as, as you can see. Uh, they could be unpacked into smaller, more individualized goals. So if you, for example, working towards children have a strong sense of identity, you would uh, work on unpacking what identity is and how you can help children to learn more about themselves. For example, through self-portraits, uh, through mirrors in uh, infant room, um, through uh, portraits that children draw of each other, etc. So you also will have individualized locus, you will talk about children's interests, you will do show and tell, and many, many other things that will encourage children to feel a strong sense of identity. You also will ensure that children feel safe and supported and you will work on attachment. So as you can see, learning outcomes can help you to reflect on your practices as well. Uh, and you also can use belonging, being, becoming as points for reflection. For example, you can set the goal of belonging as for the first few months of your work as an early childhood 
uh, teacher or a room leader uh, and ensure that you provide environments that support sense of belonging you also can support sense of belonging through practices uh, for example again having children's locus having children's names or special items from home uh, and uh, supporting belonging could be inviting children to participate in shared community experiences um, having these routines uh, they feel part of uh, using language child speaks at home and supporting this language in this service. So these are at least two most important things you can do with the EYLF. And the third one, and that's one of my favorite, uh, is to use EYLF for writing your observations. Many of us lack language for writing observations that are professional, interesting, engaging, like learning stories. To start with good writing you need to see examples of professional language used in context and EYLF is written by professors by people who are experts in early childhood education in Kenya, in Australia and this is how you can learn the key um, words key expressions uh, and you can start incorporating these words and expressions into your observations not just in analysis part but also in a part where you describe child's learning. I hope you enjoyed my brief introduction. Read through the principles, new ones and old ones, recognize them. Try to unpack them. How do you understand them? Uh, draw a mind map and then go and delve deeper into the book and read what they are. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.